plenty of water, stir it good. And be sure to break your match in two. And when you're through smoking, crush that cigarette. That's what Smokey says. And that goes for all of us, folks. Let's do as Smokey says and protect our forests. Where the range is hat and shovel and a pair of dungarees, you will find them in the forest always sniffing at the breeze. People stop and pay attention when he tells them to beware, cause everybody knows that he's the fire preventing bear. Smokey the bear, Smokey the bear, growling and a growling and a sniffing the air. He can find the fire before it starts to flame. That's why they call him Smokey. That was how he got his name. Smokey the bear, Smokey the bear. Growling and a growling and a sniffing the air. He can find the fire before it starts to flame. That's why they call him Smokey. That was how he got his name. Yes, I'm Snuffy. The forest ranger lives with me. I help him guard the forest against fire. Sometimes we drive to town together. I like that, because then I get to see my pal Smokey. As you know, Smokey prevents forest fires everywhere. I help Smokey prevent them on my forest. Whenever I see Smokey, I renew my pledge to be his helper. People often stop at the ranger station and ask where they can have a picnic. The ranger shows them the picnic grounds. I like boys and girls, and I usually go along. You see, I want to be sure they don't start a forest fire. It doesn't take kids long to unpack the car and start roasting those, pardon the expression, hot dogs. A good woodsman keeps his fire small and builds it in the fireplace when one is provided. When folks are careful, I enjoy watching them have a good time. Many people are careful. And they leave a clean camp. When they go away, I run to say goodbye to the boys and girls. Sometimes, a grown-up is in a hurry to get home. He forgets that his lighted cigarette is a dangerous weapon and can start a terrible fire in my forest. They ride away so fast, sometimes it's hard to stop them. Then I have to do the job myself. I have to stop that hot cigarette from starting a fire. I scratch and chew it until I'm sure it's out, dead out. That's how I keep my promise to Smokey. But remember, people like you must help us. So please do as Smokey says. Be careful with matches, with smokes, 
with campfires, with every fire. Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. the forest fire preventing bear boy or bear you've got a great place here i'm nuts about it then why burn it down me why i wouldn't hurt the tiniest little tree but the careless use of matches and smokes is no way to show your love of the forest fires destroy trees and kill animals they also damage the source of our precious water supply our forests provide food shelter and fun so it pays to be extra careful with fire around here. To think what I could have done with one little match. But you can bet from now on, I'll put out every match and cigarette. Dead out. Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. Pretty good at starting them, too. Me? I didn't start it. Lightning, wasn't it? Spontaneous combustion? Friction? You forgot to use your ashtray. Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. how forests help prevent floods by slowly releasing the water. That match clipper, break it. Huh? Oh, sure. And think what would happen to our water supply, wildlife, and lumber industry without our forests. Right. I'd better be getting back to the car. Ah, uh, sure has been nice being here today. Your fire flipper. Drown it. Oh, sure. Nash. And flipper, don't forget to use that ashtray in your car. Okay. Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. easy under a warm, late-season sun. Pretty enough for a calendar, I'd say. But the summer's done with. Things are kind of peaceful in the village streets, too. Oh, uh, the kids are probably at school. All in all, it must have been a good tourist season. They didn't spare the paint on the signs, you'll notice. Clarissa still got her dusting to do, even though the rush is over. People will be dropping the same the year round. And on the farm, it's hay storing time. Time to get in all the winter supplies. The warm sun doesn't fool Tom. Corn's got to be shucked too, and there's only one way to get it done. That's to do it. Of course, it's not too bad doing it in the sun. When the week's work is over with, a person gives thanks to the maker for all his many blessings. This is just about how things were one autumn in New England's pine tree state. Life seemed mighty good to most Maine folk. Well, sir, that same warm sun beat down on the woods and forests bordering the towns. 
and the trees, bushes, and the grass already had that dried out look. You see, for rain in the state for longer than folks cared to think about. But it was mighty pretty just the same, with the sun shining through the gold-colored leaves and a nippy breeze now and then making them tumble down to the ground. Of course, you get a long dry spell in a warm sun, and the woods do dry out harder and faster than is natural. When you've got woods as dry as this, well, it's no time to be careless with fire. That's just common sense, I'd say. And yet, someone was careless. And going off and leaving a brush pile burning isn't being careful exactly. It seems that the careless ones had plenty of company. You toss a cigarette down in the dry fall woods and it'll set the leaves on fire all right. That's all it takes to make a fire. A little spark, some dry stuff, and the open air. Well, sir, there were these little fires starting up here and there. Not much to begin with, not too serious. A bucket of water would have fixed every one of them to start with. Of course, there were lots of dry grass and leaves to feed on. And yet I believe a couple of good men with the right tools could have put that little fire out. Huh. Getting bigger, isn't she? Just the same, I think a good crew of forest firefighters could still lick this fire. But the wind, that wind's certainly building up. Then it happened. The wind built up in fury. The flames speeded along their fiery path, forward and up. Smoke masked the face of the warm sun. This was no longer a simple little fire. This was the beginning of a flaming giant. There's no doubt about it. The forest was ripe for destruction. Fire reaped the harbor. It was too late now for buckets of water and small crews of firefighters. With the wind strong behind it, the fire roared through the tender dry forest. But the men rallied round and did their level best to check the fire's terrible spread. For some sections, there was little hope at all. People had to flee from their homes in the face of the onrushing flames. Not only individual homes, but entire communities had to be evacuated. There was time to take out only the most cherished belongings. Field communications were hastily assembled. This helped to bridge the heroic work of the fire crews and to keep an anxious nation posted. And here is the latest roundup of conditions in the fire areas. East Waterboro, three quarters of the town has been wiped out. Brownfield, East Brownfield and Brownfield Center are blackened wastes. 250 buildings have been destroyed. West Kennebunk, flames have reached within three quarters of a mile of the town. Evacuation is now taking place. Here's a special item. The president today proclaimed the main fires a national disaster. Conditions have taken a turn for the worse. All sectors indicate the need for more firefighters, more equipment, and support. Back in the larger towns and cities behind the flaming forest, the Red Cross and other relief agencies were already at work. Equipment and supplies were quickly rounded up. These were dispatched to the fire line, along with more and more firefighters. Help came, too, from many points outside the state. Shoulder to shoulder, hundreds of men fought the flames, but the fire rolled on and on. Here was swift disaster, terribly real, Awful right. Nothing apparently was immune from the fire. 
Almost everything that lay in the ever-widening path of flame soon came to feel the searing heat. And if it was burnable, it burned. Little places of business, farms and homes. Nothing was safe from the wind-blown sparks and the fire's ravenous appetite. Here and there in the forest towns, even the lumber yards suffered complete destruction. By now, the various fires had spread across thousands of acres, and with forceful winds behind them were still going strong. But men still fought on, and then, 11 days after the fires first ran wild, firefighters stopped the advance of the flames. A forest fire is no respecter of human rights, property, or emotion. Two days later, the blessed rains came, but for 200,000 acres of forest land, the damage had been done. More than trees burned here. The birds, deer, and other wildlife are gone. Precious topsoil has been destroyed. There'll be erosion before the forest is restored. And for many communities and many people, the damage had been done. Piles of rubble now mark the spot where once palatial homes looked out to sea. They also serve to mark the crippled livelihoods of many local citizens and merchants. Even more tragic was the plight of 2,500 homeless individuals who had to start rebuilding anew, not only their homes, but their lives as well. They lost everything. In some parts of the state, devastation was widespread. Property damage was estimated at $32 million. 16 persons lost their lives. This is a terrific toll to pay for carelessness. That's why it's up to every American, man, woman, and child, to strike back at fire. We can prevent this sort of thing if we prevent the start of forest fires. If each one of us, individually, is careful, always. At the same time, we must maintain everywhere well-trained forest fire control organizations, including expert leaders, skilled forest fire fighters, up-to-date equipment, to control forest fires wherever and whenever they do start. happened in Maine, don't let it happen here.